this is Dr. Lisa Francis, Quebec University, Faculty of Medicine. Uh, and uh, this will be my talk, Digital Pathology Education, a project for the East. First, let me tell you our uh, uh, Your university is well known, and I have many friends, and I have the intention to visit the university, unfortunately. With the interruption of COVID, this was totally postponed. We hope we can do it in the future. And I knew many clinicians, in particular in the renal asthma program. Anyhow, let me tell you, uh, uh, digital pathology is something which is very dear and close to my heart, and I've been working on that for a very long time now. We totally changed the environment in this uh, small country into a very active digital environment. Digits 
to do things like capturing, managing, analysis, and we also do it as humans by the function of interpretation, something that we call teleconsultation. <coughs> so, virtual uh, microscopy actually incorporates two things. Virtual microscopy, so-called whole slide technology, as well as static image um, uh, technology. And we actually practice both. I will be discussing with you the six programs in which we have utilized digital technology to the full to promote training, education, and certification in the Middle East. The first one is seminars in best practice technology. The story about this is very interesting. I was invited to do a new course for training in technology. It was supposed to be a conventional course, and this was in 2015. And it was the University of Jordan, small group of residents. So I said I will do something totally different. I will avoid lectures, I will give cases, and we will do interactive discussion on the cases live with the residents. So these are residents from different kinds of years. And this was a total success. So many residents in many countries knew about it. And I started getting invitations from many countries. So we went to Jordan again, we went to Tunisia, we went to Lebanon. Way uh, that's actually in uh, this is in uh, Cairo, also in I was invited by my friend uh, Dr. Wissam, and uh, we, we went to many countries. Lately, we went to Syria and Iraq and Libya. Next year and the year after, I will possibly be going to Oman and your, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. It's a very popular program, so it's a three day program including physical attendance of residents. It's a 20-hour program, so actually it goes on from 9 to 5 o'clock every day. Includes virtual start discussion, afternoon quiz, quiz discussion. We had to stop briefly during the COVID period, and we resumed uh, in 22, go to Syria, Iraq, and Libya. We also did something which was totally new, is that we now produced a hybrid of our meeting. Since we found that many residents could not attend the local physical um, CML program, uh, they wanted to actually join us, so we allowed them to join remotely. So they sit in the morning, all the residents at the same time, they do the exam together, then we meet in the afternoon online and in physical, a presence in person, and we do the discussion. The meeting was total success. We did in 22 in Syria, and then we repeated this in Iraq, and lately I did this in Libya. It was a total success. I would gather that your country, which is huge and has really tens of residents, you can do it, let's say, from Mansoura or Asalaini, and you can actually, um, using Zoom or any other media, um, coordinate the activities throughout the country. I will be glad, I will be glad to help you to do that. <coughs> so that's the um, um, best practice seminar. Something that we do once or twice a year, depending on my schedule. The second one is something which is really a large program. It's an online formative assessment program. As you know, formative assessment is something which is of great importance nowadays in undergraduate and postgraduate education. It provides board level questions, encourages continuous reading, up to date resources, enables residents to assess their problems on their own. It also allows the residents to, in fact, uh, participate in this. <coughs> uh, the program actually uh, incorporates 12 quizzes, one quiz per uh, month. So at the beginning of each month, we launch one quiz. It has, um, it goes on for 17 months, and it has 72 CMEs. <coughs> each quiz of every month incorporates six single best answer high quality institute with a long clinical video, almost like you said, any time. They are very high level, more level at least, for part two and class path, and it goes on for 100 minutes and they can do it. The overall success rate because of the level of the exam is about 50% score. Um, and the residents who score more than 50% automatically get a CME. In addition to the CME certificate, they also get a detailed report of their performance, and I will be showing you that. So this is where I work in my department in Kuwait. And we send our exam material to a server in Sydney. We purchase an account with them. And we also utilize a virtual slide uh, program uh, in the USA. We also uh, took permission to use virtual slides from Leeds University. 
We now have 55 countries, Egypt, of course, is included. I think there's seven, seven residents so far. Uh, I'm not sure if I from your sector. Uh, and we have almost 1,200 residents worldwide actively engaged in our program. The exam material is very high level. I would encourage all your residents to register and participate. It is all free. And we can give you an account to supervise their performance. We include 47 detailed categories in the exam. Of course, it will vary from one exam to another. And we cover all the topics. And this is what would happen with every resident. If they pass, they will get their certificate. And they will get a detailed report showing their own performance in each subject. How many questions did they answer? Like in Europe authority, the answer is 11 out of 13, and this is their performance. So this resident, for instance, has satisfactory performance. This is why we call it a quiz. In order to verify and certify that our exam is of scientific value and is actually of high content material, we invite international uh, examiners to review the exam material before we post it, and we were glad to have a really fantastic group of specialists who reviewed our exam. Of course, some of you are interested, I can extend an invitation for you to participate. We have so far concluded uh, five programs. We started 19, now 23 has closed last May. <coughs> and we started the 2024 exam, which is unique in its variety. Now, residents who have very high performance, they just say pass in a large number of quizzes, we give them gold certificate. We also award <coughs> a certificate silver as well as a bronze. And the reviewers, they obtain their own certificate. So if you review any of our quizzes, depending on your area of interest, you would be awarded a certificate like this. <coughs> so far we have successfully delivered 12,120 quizzes. I can assume that our program is possibly the largest active ongoing technology CRD in the world. And we are offering it free of charge. Each one of these exams is offered by the US CAP for at least $200 per quiz. And we give it free. <coughs> The average score is about 57%, and average pass rate is 64 and online feedback is very high. We have more than 900 residents who have actually given, conveyed to us the feedback. The, in general, the online survey shows a very um, a high satisfaction level by residents. The only area that they said is that they feel the quiz is difficult, and actually I'm not apologetic about this. We maintain a very high standard. We would like the all residents to go up to our level. We don't want to go to their level. This is why formative assessment is very, this is what we call formative. Yeah. It will educate you as a trainer and the resident at the same time. If their level of performance is satisfactory, is marginal, and needs areas of uh, enhancement, correction, retraining, emphasis, or if your performance is grossly poor, and you are unable really to compete. A resident like this in the zone possibly would be advised to leave the discipline of pathology. <coughs> uh, in addition, we managed to place and do statistics in our exam. And we can tell you so far that if your resident year one performs in this region of 15 to 25, I can tell you this is quite satisfactory and acceptable. But if your year five year resident performs far less, let's say, at at this level or at this level, I would be very cautious about this resident, and I would presume if they sit for a final exam, they are unlikely to pass. <coughs> so, the third program we'll discuss here today is something we do not wish that technology, is the external quality assurance. As you are aware, as the expensive technology, external quality assurance is now mandatory for lab certification and accreditation. No lab in the world should actually do that. In the US, no lab can do training of residents unless they have an external quality assurance and technology. The problem with this is that these programs are very expensive. For instance, to join any single program, every resident has to pay about 200 euros in UK or pounds. And in, uh, to join, let's say, the Australian program, several programs will cost $6,000 per lab each year. Now, we offer the entire program free and we maintain the same levels. So we provide external quality assurance, both individual, to individual doctors, 
and to that of the first individual doctors, they can actually obtain a CME. The latter is cannot obtain CME, they just obtain it. Here is me sitting and doing one of the circulations with my residents because the quality material is not circulated by me. But our lab is on that EPA, so we sit together and we do the diagnosis and we submit it. I believe this girl is from Mansoura. I will not tell you her name, it's up to her to decide. And these are two centers in other two countries doing the EQA at the same time. I was quite happy when they sent me the picture as proof that we are doing it. We so far have 95 number of these. We have a couple of labs from Egypt. I'm really eager that all of you participate. I will give you the address at the end where you can log in and register for free. And your residents are all welcome to join. Uh, the quality of material we said is extremely high, very educational. We give at least two educational cases each circulation. So it will really um, uh, uh, engage your residents in very high level of training and interaction uh, akin to what every resident internationally is now getting. And we offer it very often with free of charge. We also started an online journal club program. You know, journal clubs are something which are very fashionable. What we did is that we would like how to do this across countries. So we took, we started with uh, Libya, uh, Syria, and Iraq. We collected a large number of residents. I think they have in excess of 250 residents. And we assigned a coordinator in each country. We sit on Zoom, and I give them every year from my center 48 review articles to read. Every month we meet and we discuss four of these. So in 12 months we will cover everything. We meet every month over Zoom. We, the residents present the papers and we discuss them. Every three months, which means every 12 papers, I will give them a very comprehensive assessment based on the papers. So this will be an assessment of how much they actually obtain, how much they did comprehend from their reading. And actually the program has a completely something uh, very attractive. Many of the residents are engaged. Now, why I can't extend to our companies is probably because of the limitation of time. If your center is interested, you can approach me. I can train you, I can send the material. I will do the exam for your residents. And all what you have to do is to arrange for the residents across the country, actually. You can do it for tens of, but you have really a large number of potential candidates in your country for this activity. Your, your university can be really a leader in this, and you can lead the journal club for the entire company. And I can tell you and help you with that. That should be no problem. <clears throat> the fifth, fourth program is that we actually are very keen about is the interactive microscopy program. As you know, the US CAP actually has started, I think, five years back to launch this kind of activity. And we actually started this a long time ago, but they actually uh, charged for that. So they charged per hour 200 US dollars. And all you have to do is that you sit with a consultant online over their microscope or over a virtual site and they discuss, let's say, five or six or seven cases in their areas of interest. Uh, this is a program actually that is um, very fashionable now. Unfortunately, because of the cost, it is outside the reach of many of our residents. So we decided to do a similar program and to make it uh, uh, free of charge. Uh, lead to you know, follow the same level, very high level, and we now have a list of high experts, high, uh, highly qualified international experts who are willing to contribute material with us. Uh, so uh, hopefully we can actually invite your residents, but they have to register again with us. And it's all free. <coughs> the sixth program and the final one before I conclude my talk is something that makes me and makes us as Arabs extremely proud. And that is, we have incorporated now virtual slide technology into board examination very early. Uh, our board actually started giving exams in um, uh, 2011. Uh, we met in Beirut. I was then the chair of the exam committee in the AUD in Beirut, and we took a decision that the Arab board should now pass for a set of class slides which we gave in 2011. 2013 or 15 years, we should stop giving slides and now we change to virtual slide technology. This was something really revolutionary and I prepared the material and we ran the exam in Beirut 
in 2014, it was a total success. Media fraud research, virtual science, and virtual science in cytology. The exam was very good, it's a 400 exam. And uh, after uh, in three, four years, we actually invited, and this was our team, yes, this is uh, Professor Manning, um, uh, our my friend, from Royal College, he was the chair of the Royal College of Examination. We invited him. This was official invitation. We collaborated with the Royal College and they sent him an exam to us. And he was so um, interested in the exam technology, and he said we possibly would copy this and you know uh, transform our exam. Uh, what I understand is that the Royal College likely within the coming two years, I was told about this from uh, officials from the college, that within the coming two or three years they will now have the last slide run their exam entirely on virtual host like like we do. So basically it was the American board and then us who actually have started this technology just a couple of uh, two years apart. So we really are leaders in this field and we have really gained extensive experience. Uh, Dr. Manik was immensely impressed and he asked me whether he could sit and do the exam himself and score. So we allowed him he sat for four hours and did the exam actually we scored him and he was quite happy with that. <clears throat> so let me conclude. I hope I haven't taken a long time. I hate long lecture and I know you are very busy. I can claim that the six programs I have shown you, we started about 10 years back, shows that we can now incorporate digital technology, including virtual science, which is one variety, to successfully lead education in our region and we can give it for free. And the program covers 55 countries now with almost 1,200 residents. So our reach is very extensive. Well, we can award a large number of CMEs. All our residents are in need of CMEs for their training and certification and promotion. We can now cover 400 assessment of assessment. We are very proud of our chief. We now are running for a journal club on Angela Account. If your center is interested, I can train you and help you to do it and I will provide the material and the examination. All you have to do is just arrange the online meeting. We now are proud that we are the international external quality provider in Canada. We are giving it free of charge, saving a lot of money for your residents and for your centers. I encourage all the centers in Egypt to register with me free of charge and also with the interactive microscopy. So, digital microscopy has from the way I have shown you that, I will teach, play, and test. And I think I need to be clear. And I think it has changed it for good. And I'm, I'm lucky because I know many, there are many leaders of digital microscopy uh, in, uh, in your country. Unfortunately, not for the center. So I know your country is, can also be a leader in this field. And I would be quite happy to collaborate and give any suggestions from my experience. <coughs> so, we will encourage your residents to participate in these programs. Of course, they can register in any one of them. Uh, there are five programs. Your lab can register in uh, number three as a lab. Go to this address, aip-ad.org. This is the National Academy of Pathology, Arab Division. And you will see programs, and there are these five programs, and you can register free of charge for any one of them. And by this, I can say, Salam Alaikum, thank you very much. I hope. Uh, uh, this has uh, covered uh, what, has, what was required for me. Unfortunately, I won't be able to take your questions. Uh, if you send me questions by email or WhatsApp, I will be glad to answer. I will be away from my very short summary. Thank you and goodbye.
we, we work together before we actually did a meeting in Italy together. So I know him for very long that he's a leader in this kind of project. And I'm sure many, many of you are like this in your country. So uh, that's our contribution, you know. Uh, from our side, I hope it was of value to you. Thank you so much. And uh, actually, I thank all our elite uh, guest speakers in order of speech, Professor Dr. Samayed, Professor Dr. Amstebei, and Professor Dr. Aysan Francis. And now for the floor for uh, questions and discussion. Actually, we're opening now. This is the opening. 